Okay, sure. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome you all to the NHF cardiac course for postgraduate student. Today, we'll be uh, transmitting a live case from our cath lab uh, with our view of role of imaging in complex PCI. We have very distinguished speakers and analysts um, among us, with us. Uh, we have Professor Takasaki Akasaka, interventional cardiologist from Japan. He will be. He will be as a panelist. Also, he has a very important talk. He will give an important talk here, and we, we have with us uh, Professor Maximal Hawk, Professor of Cardiology, uh, Ibrahim Cardiac Hospital and Research Institute. We have Professor Dr. Shams Manohar from Evercare Hospital. We have Professor Mir Jamaluddin Ahmed, Director, National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease. We have Professor Dr. Mohammad Mamun Rashid. He's also a professor of cardiology, National Institute of Cardiovascular Disease, and just joined Professor Dr. Afzal Rahman, who is the S Director of Cardio NICVD. He also already joined us. We have Professor Dr. Shafiul Din Ahmed, <coughs> of cardiology, Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. We have also Professor Vadu Chaudhary. He is our regular guest. He is a, he is a professor and head of the department of uh, Department of Cardiology, Dhaka Medical College Hospital. So we have got a very distinguished panelist with us. Our uh, uh, today's uh, case, uh, uh, may I request our, from CAT Lab, Professor, Faz Faz Professor Fazila Malik and his team will be doing the case. And may I request Professor Fazila Malik uh, to present the case. Professor yes. Fazila Malik. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming and for your kind introduction. I would like to thank Professor Atasaka and all the uh, guest faculty who have uh, come to join us virtually. So as you know, we work at the National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute. We have uh, been uh, doing uh, cases, uh, PCS over the last uh, 20 years now. And uh, could, could you show us our, yes, the next slide, please. Can we have the next slide? So by uh, December 2019, we have done more than 43,000 PCI. We do started doing less main PCI on a regular basis since 2007. And by December of 2019, we've done more than uh, 2,100 left main cases. And uh, today also we will be doing a left main case. So let's go to the history of the patient. So this is a 71 year old gentleman. He came to us with non-STEMI. He's hypertensive. His creatinine was 2.2. Today his creatinine was 1.8 and he, his hemoglobin on admission was 7.4 gram. After two units of blood transfusion, the hemoglobin is at present 11 grams per DL. His ejection fraction is 55%, and he has a very strong family history of coronary artery disease. So uh, this is his ECG when he came to us with non-STEMI. Then let's go to the next slide. This is his angiogram that was done on Saturday this week. And as you can appreciate, there is severe uh, proximal LAD long segment lesion involving the distal left main. And the proximal LCX is also diseased uh, around 60 to 70%. And you can appreciate the collaterals. If you go to the previous slide, you can appreciate the collaterals uh, going uh, to, the, uh, to the RCA. The RCA is a CTO. Let's go to the previous slide before the one before this. Yes, let's have a run on this. And you can see the collateral from the left side going to the RCA. So the RCA is a CTO with this severe uh, distal left main disease. So he has a CKD. His uh, syntax score, syntax 1 score is 36. However, if you consider the syntax 2, it favors PCI considering the fact that he has uh, severe uh, kidney disease as well as his diabetes. His diabetes is under poor control. And um, so we decided to do a staged PCI for him. We first tackled the RCA on the index day of the angiogram. And we did this with the whole procedure. The CAG as well as the PCI was done with 40 ml of dye. We used VisiPack and we used Pilot 50 hydrophilic wire with a fine cross microcatheter to cross the lesion. And um, 
we opened it up with uh, did pre dilatation and then we took a single stent and we deployed it uh, it was two stents actually so can we go to the next slide so this was the final and today we also did a check angiogram and uh, the check angiogram showed that the rca was doing well uh, this is uh, can you have a look at the angiogram so this is today's uh, picture and it looks fine so this is rca today we were planning to do the left side and we wanted to do it with the guidance of oct and that's why we invited professor akasake because he's the world renowned authority on oct now someone might question that why do oct in a patient with ckd well if you have angiopore registration you can get brilliant pictures with oct and you just use the dye that you are using to take the pictures and that was the plan but uh, unfortunately we opened up two catheters and our oct machine is giving us some problem uh, so it seems like we will be unable to use the oct today so what we plan to do is we are going to use the ivers catheter instead and so that's what i'm going to do i'm taking the ivers catheter from the left main to the lad and let's have a run and see what's happening by ivers so it was a plan to do a oct but things didn't work out that way so we are going to do an ivers instead so this is a manual pull back this this is relatively all right so we will miss dr akasaka's expertise we were really looking forward to learning from him about oct but uh, uh, things didn't work out here you can see a bit of calcium at 5 o'clock position quite a bit of calcium in it seems from 3 o'clock to 9 o'clock and the lumen is also now this is the plaque burden so we are going from the led towards the left main significant disease also calcium at 5 o'clock for quite a lot of plaque burden here and the lumen is significantly obstructed so again there is calcium this is near the ostia and you can see the lcx coming at 9 o'clock position and you can appreciate that the lcx also has significant disease in its ostia with some calcium as well and this is the bifurcation as you can see so uh, obviously it seems like we will need a double stent strategy and uh, uh, this is the left main this is the left main and yes sir so this is the circumflex you can see the wire in the circumflex and the disease there so the left main is also significantly diseased calcified lesion so we think we need to do a double stent strategy here and we have decided that considering everything the, uh, so here the left main looks good right so we will be doing uh, we have decided to do a dk crush because the literature so shows that dk crush gives the best possible result thank so you so that like uh, uh, may i talk with any anyone from the panelist have a some a different idea about the uh, uh, afzal rahman you here professor abdul rahman yes i am here uh, uh, sir do you have any okay. other comment okay thank you? thank you thank you very much it is really honored for me for inviting me to join this exciting um, <clears throat> uh, live cases and takasaki how how are you it is nice to see you because uh, you are very popular in bangladesh so this is a very uh, difficult and challenging cases because both of the coronary artery diseases led and also the lcx and left vein also disease significant disease and there is calcium in the led or the lcx and there is no doubt 
we should do the question strategy from starting. It is not that we should, there is an option for provisional stamping, in my perception. This is free but, okay. yes, free so, I am, so I agree with the Fuzila. Number two is the regarding the two-stage strategy. Uh, maybe uh, your uh, fee stamp is not good. Uh, would not be good. Either decay crash or pullout is an option in this case. But before that, so decay crash is a viable option, but uh, it depends upon who is expertised on this field. If you are very much comfortable with decay crash, go for a decay crash. No doubt about that. But one thing has to be done. Uh, this vessel has to be adequate to the Redirection is very important in this case. Procedure. So, Fuzila is doing that, I think, so I am, with a non-compliant balloon, not a semi-compliant balloon, because calcium is static. Regarding the rota, I'm not sure that uh, rota is mandatory in this case, but somebody maybe uh, think of that. But I think so, non-compliant balloon uh, is good for this, and with adequate fluid dilution is very important for doing this. Then, DK class is, a, uh, is also my first choice. So we did a pre-dilatation just now with a 2.5 NC balloon for the LCX. Professor Takasaki, any comment on this case, please? Yeah, thank you very much for a kind invitation. Oh, you, uh, based on the I was findings, as uh, Dr. Raman said, uh, there are some calcium in the, especially the myocardial site, but I could not find uh, uh, a, a uh, lots of disease in uh, the, the CX at the bifurcation. So, uh, yeah, DK crash is one of the options, but in this case, uh, just cross over and do kissing might be the another option, uh, much more simple. Based on the I was findings, I saw uh, the simple crossover technique might be the, uh, the one of the options, I think, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you uh, Professor Maxwell Hawk, sir. Can you comment, please? Unmute, sir. Unmute. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Fajula, for uh, this for this nice case. I will say a little bit of query regarding the osteum of the circumflex, because to me, in the first, I just saw a glimpse of the uh, the circumflex. It that did not look to me very significant. Can you show us uh, the circumflex? Yes, uh, we, we, we will show the. Can we have the IVAS again, please? We have it focused on the. So that's the CERC wire that you can see in the nine o'clock position. And uh, uh, so there seems to be disease, right? And angiographically, it looks like 70%, but this looks like disease. Can you please show me the angiograph angiogram also? Yes, please. Uh, we will show you the angiogram right now. Please, uh, let's go to the first view first. First view, first view, please. First view, the angiographic view. Uh, the first, when the, they did the angiogram on the Saturday, when we did the presentation, Tofi, can you show us the angiograph on the before wiring, not today? Yes, 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 please, yes. Go. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is so. Yeah. We just took two shots as he had uh, CKD, so this was the issue. So uh, these only these two shots were taken, and uh, the LCX looks hazy. The ostia looks hazy to me, and it looks diseased as well. So, Obviously, the disease in the uh, distal left main and in the proximal LAD long segment is very significant. However, the LCX is also angiographically not free of disease. The ostia is significantly hazy, and if you consider it toward the healthy segment, it does look diseased, 60 to 70 percent. My point is, this is a 71 year uh, patient with a CKD, and if you can make it a simple uh, crossover. Yes. Uh, maybe that so uh, uh, we uh, we want to give the patient the best possible result. As you rightly say, he has a CKD. 
and that's why since he had severe triple vessel disease we also staged the procedure for him and we feel that for him to have the best uh, option would be a double stent strategy and with that actually we've already pre dilated the lcx uh, so uh, it's like uh, we will uh, be committed to a double stent strategy but i totally appreciate your thoughts and it is indeed a good option to try uh, with a provisional stenting and then go for crossover now with this the angle that this patient has this would not be a very nice angle for tap if we did a provisional stenting so what our options would be left a culotte culotte a lot of metal mass would be uh, left there and this, as you we all are aware he's a ckd patient and with a ckd patient i would be hesitant to leave a lot of metal mass um, in the left main and proximal so uh, considering everything uh, we felt that a dk crush would be a good option so we've taken our stent and now we're taking our balloon please give me the balloon please professor frasmanavar we're taking the Uh, thank you. Actually, uh, I I think it, 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 as Sujit has pointed out, the LCX ostium is disease, no doubt about that. But probably it's not very significant. Actually, I think it's about forty, fifty percent something. Uh, probably I would have kept a wire there and go for a crossover stent, and if uh, necessary to rescue the LCX later. But anyway, if you, if you can do it a lot, uh, less amount of dye, if she can manage the LCX, that's fine. That's okay. Thank you. The, one thing about DK crash is you know it works like a formula. so i have yeah. seen that it is especially very good for uh, ckd patient because you don't have to uh, use any dye you know what has to be done one after the another so yeah. now what we are doing is we are we wired both vessels we are positioning our stent in the lcx and we will now deploy it once we are we are sure about it hmm. so we'll just have a look where our position is dye please This is, I think this is fine. So we are deploying the LC extent. We'll pull back our balloon and uh, inflate it further. Go to higher pressure because. So now we've deployed our stent. We're going to remove the balloon and the wire from the LCX once it's deflated. So now we're removing the wire and the balloon from LCX, and we've hardly used any dye so far. Now we're going to crush the stent in the LCX with our LED balloon. Where is it? Yeah, there. It's positioned now. Positioning our Balloon. What is the size of the LED balloon? Three millimeter balloon. It's a NC balloon, three by fifteen NC balloon. So we're. What is the size of the LCX stent? Two two point seven five fifteen. Okay. Officer Mr. Jamaluddin, please have a comment. Ah. Mr. Jamaluddin, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you uh, for uh, this brilliant case. Uh, practically, uh, as because he is a patient of uh, uh, that is renal impairment, and so uh, we are deciding for double stent strategy as because there is osteal lesion. But in this osteal lesion, we think about if the osteal lesion does not cross five millimeter beyond the ostium, we can think of. Single stent, but it, uh, however, it is decided for double stent strategy, and DK crush is a good option. Or uh, otherwise, culotte work uh, could be done due to this angle. The DK crush is a good option, and she is doing very well. We are <coughs> very happy with uh, seeing. Uh, Doctor Amar Rashid Cesar, thank you for inviting me to observe this brilliant presentation. here the um, regarding the concern of the patient age and the ckd condition this may be a factor to take the decision whether it 
decay crash or the provisional stenting. Uh, I think that uh, in the angiography, there is no so much disease involving the L6, but the IBS shows around 50 to 60 percent. So uh, it could be the um, provisional stenting, uh, maybe the uh, could be procedure, a choice, uh, choice uh, regarding the patient age and CKD. Considering the, and considering the angle of the bifurcation, she has uh, probably she has decided for double stent strategy as because if we give LM to LED, then TAP is not at all suitable in this case. No, no. Uh, you are right, sir. The TAP is not suitable, but the angle is around 45 to 50 yeah. degree. Uh, so decay crash is the uh, procedure if we That's take decision to for double stenting. After double, yeah. Officer Shafiuddin. Please, any comments? Uh, thank you very much uh, for inviting me in this uh, nice webinar. Uh, actually, so far, uh, uh, the learned uh, panel of experts have decided and discussed about the uh, case, a uh, very nice and difficult case. I think, actually, uh, Professor Fujila Pinesa, uh, what uh, she is doing is in the right way because for a total revascularization um, with uh, uh, keeping patent both vessels. I think decay crash is a good choice. I agree with the uh, decay crash. Okay. There is a question from the audience. Any panelist answer? Should we have done a FFR before uh, considering any uh, uh, intervention in LCX? Should we have done a, a FFR before? And uh, that's an important uh, question. I think so. And but thing is that here the LCX oh. tackle. With because of the angle, number one. Number two, there is a calcium. Number three, there is an ostium. And beyond the ostium, there is, there is a disease. So in the calcified, the, uh, whether we, we will go for two stand or second stand, the determining factor is the whether LCX is disease and more than five millimeter and whether it's calcium is there. But there is definitely the calcium is not uh, superficial. It is much deeper calcium. But um, sometimes it, it could be difficult uh, electron. So calcium is maybe the um, uh, determining factor of here. And ostium is disease. And ostium is, IVAS shows that ostium is significantly disease. Not only the uh, at L6 ostium, but beyond that. Now, the question was that if FFR was negative. So, uh, can I answer this question about the FFR? I, I think maybe it would not give the answer totally because this patient has come with non-ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. And if you look at his angiogram that we did on Saturday, there is considerable haziness in the LCX. So sometimes in an acute coronary syndrome, you might not get the true picture. Uh, so that could be an issue with the FFR. But usually FFR, as the questioner has rightly pointed out, will give you a very good answer. In this non-STEMI situation, I don't know uh, how effective it would be, but yes. Most of the cases, FSR will give you the answer. Also, Fazila Malik, there are another question from the audience. Yeah, because the patient has CKD, uh, yes, could mini crush could be a better option to avoid more uh, little die and more uh, little time. Well, uh, uh, Shil, uh, the fact is that all studies have showed that uh, uh, DK crush is more effective than mini crush. Uh, for long-term results. So as we have noticed, this patient has CKD. So we want to give him the best possible long-term outcome. But as you have rightly pointed out, mini crush is easier than DK crush, but DK crush will give you better long-term results. I mean, that's what the studies show. Fajila, can I add one point? That yes, in, the, please. in the mini crush, while crossing may be difficult than the decay crust. Yes, so the mind. final kissing, as Professor Abdul Rahman has rightly pointed out, final kissing chances are more with the decay crush. And that's why you get better long term results with decay crush compared to mini crush. Because the procedure, so we are going to go for our first kiss now. We've rewired the LCX and we are doing our first kiss. Um, we went up to 14. Both, okay. So now again, the LCX will be removed. 
observe both your jawans that the teasing is completed now can i ask you one question yes yeah. uh, so lcx wire and complete the two are both removed for the non stmi okay what i which one is the culprit vessel for non stmi okay which one is the culprit vessel in the non stmi it, Actually, it is possible that the rca may be the culprit because long standing it, it was no ultimately last uh, maybe there is a plaque rupture and ultimately got occluded total occlusion sometimes this happens the patient yeah. get retrograde flow for a long time yeah some doctor complex does not look to me as the culprit vessel not not the led most likely sir most likely rca was the culprit lesion yeah. <coughs> culprit but uh, as our image expert professor takasaki told us that uh, the image the iwas image uh, seems to be uh, looks like that lcx was not that significantly diseased yeah. so you would be preferring to do a crossover stenting rather than doing up front napkin 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 please i think uh, yeah based yeah, on please. the iwas findings uh, the the uh, plug is very stable calcified and uh, we cannot identify any vulnerable plug uh, at the site therefore i agree the culprit of uh, non stemi but might be uh, rca i think yeah and uh, there are some data comparison between uh, dk crush and provisional dk crush if you uh, decide the dk crush uh, the planning dk crush should be better than the the, the provisional dk crush i think yes recent data demonstrate yeah Thank you. What is the size of the stent you are taking? Plan to take in the LED? Three point five by thirty-eight uh, for the, and then we will do report with a larger uh, balloon. So our stent is going at three point five by thirty-eight. Check please. Pull back. Yes. Die. Hmm. Inflate this. So as you appreciate, we've hardly used any dye. Yes. We'll pull back and then we'll go with this for a higher pressure. Let it deflate first. So you have chosen a huh? local view to. Uh, mark the ostia of the left main, but usually we prefer to do a alo cranial or a modified alo cranial to view the alo uh, left main ostia. So, so that that's a very important learning point for those who are starting on left main. Uh, thank you, Professor Bodhuzaman. So uh, for those of you who are starting left main, have to be absolutely sure that your Stent is spot on, covering the ostia. You don't want to miss it if you're planning to uh, cover the ostia. And uh, this is a bit tight. It's tight. Don't push it. Just let me. Yeah, someone. It's quite tight. So we were having a bit of issue with pulling the. We didn't want to put the wire out. Yes. So now again, we will rewire our. We'll do proximal optimization, and then we will go for rewiring. Because if you do proximal optimization, it makes your procedure a lot uh, easier. And um, so this is a four by twelve uh, balloon, NC balloon that we are taking now. So when we do a uh, left main, one of the crucial things is that we need to position our stent properly. and we want our stent to be properly sized 
and properly deployed and well expanded on no account should we leave a under expanded stent or stent malposition or undersized stent deployed in the left main because then the risk of stent thrombosis then instant restenosis everything increases so we are uh thank you madam i like to add one more point as because your initial port is also more important for recrossing the wire as because it may uh, cross behind the uh, stand and that is why initial port is very much important thank you so much that's a very very relevant point that we need to remember so we've done our uh, port and now we will attempt to wire the lcx and our uh, workhorse wires are shion blue we've used shion blue here what was the pressure of for port yeah. what? what we went to we went to 14 for 14 4 by 14 this is for pressure yes professor so now, marik professor yes, marik yes, what, what is the size of the the, the port balloon oh 4 by uh, 4 by 12 size. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. So now we are again taking a fine cross with our Shion Blue. And um, our workhorse, our wire in uh, our cath lab is either a Shion Blue or a Run Through. Okay. So now we'll check with the micro whether, as Professor Mir Jamal has pointed out, whether our wire has gone under the stent or is it, so it went, so it went easily. So it means that our wire is in position, right? Otherwise, it would not have gone so easily. So we'll keep the micro a bit close. This will allow us to negotiate our wire more easily. Now this wire we've already used quite a few times. Uh, so already we've used it, so it lost a bit of its strength and it might not go through the double layer, but let's see if it doesn't, we can always change to a fresh wire, right? One thing very uh, important about uh, Digger Crash that we, are, we always have a wire in our main, main vessel. We, we never lose the main, main artery. There's always yes. a wire. So that's the most important and favorable point in favor of ticket crash. So we've rewired our LCX for the second time. So was it, was it possible to ensure that it was crossing frog, frog through the proximal starts? It was possible to do that in this situation. In a real world, real world situation. We want it to cross through the proximal start. I'm not... OCT uh, is one. Yeah. Well, that was the plan, you know, to show with OCT. Yes. So the micro is not going that easily. Maybe we can rewire again. So it went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. looks good, right? Yes, yes. So we're removing the micro catheter again. Regarding port, I have one question. Actually, is it mandatory to use uh, NC balloon always? Uh, well, you know, there's a, uh, two schools of thought and maybe uh, someone could elaborate as well. Some uh, operators nowadays prefer to use semi-compliant, okay? The, and the logic behind using a semi-compliant is that it ensures that the struts will be definitely well opposed. Personally, we tend to use NC balloons and we go up to higher pressures. So uh, nowadays, some operators are uh, using semi-compliant. So, Professor Akasaka, what do you prefer, semi-compliant or NC? I like NC, yes. Oh, NC yeah. Balloon. yeah, NC balloon should be better. Okay, great. Yes, so most operators prefer NC balloon. Is that safer? Right, so...
finding it a bit difficult. So it went. Now let's take our balloon for the LED. So this is going to be our second case. What is the size of the balloon in the LCS? We put the balloon in the LCS, yes. So once we do the case, we'll position it. It's a bit short balloon. It's a, uh, it's a 2.75 by 12. Maybe we could have taken a, this is eight. Okay, it's a 2.75 by eight. We could have taken a long. And now the, for the LED, it's 3.5 by 12. And as you see with DK crush, you know, it's like doing a formula. There's a recipe and you're following it. You don't need to use any dye. You just look at the pressure tracings. You look at the ECG tracings and you go on watching your patient. And if everything is fine, touch wood, you go on doing the procedure. So now I'm pulling back my LCX balloon, positioning it. And I think this should be all right. I, I, we could have used a longer balloon for L6. That would have made our life a lot easier. Okay. It's okay now. Yeah. So we are... Now, so we, we went up to 24. So now we'll do the final casing. Let's deflate both balloons perfectly. Now we go for the kiss. So we went up to 14. And now we are taking out the LCX balloon. We'll do our final report. Yes. Oh, we need to do that, yes. So we will, uh, we used, as you noticed, we used a large stent, right, uh, for the LED. So we're going to do uh, post dilatation for the entire length of the LED now, and then we're going to do our report, okay. So this is, uh, we're inside the stent, yeah. So this is a 3.5 by 12 NC balloon, and we'll make sure that we dilate the entire stent. May make it properly opposed to the wall of the LED. Ensure that it doesn't fall on the junction or bifurcation. Yeah. Okay. No, no, it's a bit too long, you know. We need to use a shorter balloon for this. Yes, okay. We can do a report with a four. We had a four, right? And then we can do an Ivers run and then uh, do our final shot. Because the IVAS will tell us if anything needs to be done, and then we'll have our final shot. So we have used minimum amount of dye. And we've hydrated the patient overnight, and uh, he is. Uh, also, the dye that we are using is VZPAC. So we really wanted to do an OCT actually, you know, to show the angio registration because you get such wonderful pictures and you don't need any extra dye. And, you know, I think this is the answer uh, for CKD patients. And Professor Akasaka, you know, a, a few of our other CKD patients, what we have done for RCA, we have used normal saline. So for RC, we didn't even use a dye. And for the left side, we just used angio co-registration. So we were planning to, you know, maybe set up a 
research protocol just for CKD patients with uh, comp where you know you tackle complex cases using OCT and you just use the minimum of dye. So for CKD patients, OCT is not a contraindication. Yeah, I agree. Yes, uh, for RCA, saline flash uh, could be okay. Uh, yeah. We can get a clear image. And in LCX, uh, if you try uh, in LCA, if you try to reduce the contrast, you try to keep the contrast within a guiding catheter, and then you flash a saline. You can get the the, the At that time, you can do the angio registration. So it's an, one of the techniques, yes. Yes, and angio registration makes such a difference, and it's so sad that we couldn't do show OCT today. Wanted, but at least the case went well, and we could do uh, some uh, IVAS imaging. And apps, uh, for complex cases, some form of imaging, whether it's OCT or it's IVAS, is, I think, absolutely mandatory to get great long-term outcome and results. So um, uh, instead of OCT, we had to use IVERS, but let's see how the results came. So we are taking our IVERS catheter now. So can we go live, please? Can to this. Yes, if, if, could you remove it? I, I, yeah, so this is the, this is from where the stent starts, okay. So pretty diffuse disease downstream also. But here the stent is, as you can see, well opposed. Yeah. Yeah, this is the LCX. This is the left main. Yes. So the ostia is, as Mushad was saying, very nicely covered, and that's us done. Do you want to uh, do with a five? The ostia or 4.5? No, it's fine, it's supposed, right? Takasaki, Takasaki, what is, what is your comment on the IVAS images? Yeah, uh, just all the I, I like to do the uh, 4.5, yes. 4.5, okay, yes. Yeah. So we'll get a 4.5, uh, 8, please. Yeah, generally speaking, I was finding it's very fine. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, well opposed, and uh, I could not identify any significant uh, uh, under expansion. Right, uh, generally yeah. speaking, yes, uh, very wonderful results. Uh, and with the uh, OCT, actually, the pictures are even so stunning. Right, uh, yeah. with the malaposition and everything. Sometimes yeah. it's too beautiful that. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, I, I could not explain you a wonderful technique by using OCT today, right? Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. <laughs> that, that I'm feeling a bit sad about it because I was so looking forward to learning from you, Professor Akasaka, today. So we had all planned to, you know, do this case with OCT and angio registration. And I thought that all the students would benefit really from. Uh, this, uh, but uh, the machine, you know, in the morning they checked the machine, it was fine. And right now, 
it's sort of creating problems. So we've taken a 4.5 by 8. So for, oh, so we are done. So for traditionally for a CKT patient, maybe uh, IVAS would be a safer uh, option, right? Like in this patient, we have to use IVAS. But I feel that with the OCT and angio for registration, you don't really have to use extra dye. While you're taking the shots for the angiogram, the picture of the, yes. So you can see the OCT as well. So now we're going to give a bit of nitro and we're going to take the final angio shot. Your OCT is working now? Okay, so okay now Morshed uh, is very keen to take a single OCD shot. So our OCD mission apparently is working now, but it is not giving angio for registration. So even if it's not giving angio for registration, uh, when we take the final shot for our angio, we'll just take a shot with the OCT. So it, no extra dye will be used. So at least we can get a bit of OCT, right? And uh, we have, uh, so as this is our final shot and the procedure is uh, almost finished, so we're taking our OCT now. So I, I, what, I, I wonder what happened, what glitch happened that the angio co registration didn't work. So, so can we, yes. you can go to the angio's picture, okay? Yeah, right. So you can, so we are taking our OCT catheter now. So that's us. Okay, so let's have a right. Yes, we have the. This is all right, Professor Akasaka. Shall we take the picture now? Ah uh, yes, please. Yes, So we're going to have a look at the angio now and uh, the OCT picture is going to get taken as well. Oh, please show the OCT and as well as the angio both. Take your time. Wait. Bata should be on now. You can give some GTN first. Did you give some GTN? Okay, so acquisition, please. So uh, uh, can uh, uh, Professor Akasaka comment on the uh, okay. OCT, please? Yes. Let's uh, 
you, you can identify the color bar, white bar at the center of the longitudinal view, right? Yeah, it's an position indicator, right? And you can see some red color that might demonstrate the branch position. If there are lots of incomplete opposition, we have to speculate the incomplete opposition there, but here should be a, a CX, right? Therefore, I, I think uh, th that is no, no problem, right? Yes, yes. And, and uh, uh, try to rotate uh, the short axis with uh, the okay. CX, 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 CX should be, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's a lot, try to check the longitudinal view, right? Okay. Okay. Can you rotate? Yeah, the yeah, rotate, view? rotate, yes. Short axis view, right. No, the, the right upper side, you open the, the, the uh, no, 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 I, I, it's okay. So you try to rotate and show the, the, the blue uh, color to the uh, CX site. Okay. Yes, it, it should be okay, right, okay. And you can see the, the CX in the, yes, at the bottom, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, he has a small incomplete opposition there, right? Yes, we went to uh, up to 4.5 over there, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. So try to check the, the distal side and... Uh, 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 let's go to the distal side to see if there's any dissection or anything left. Let's go to right, the distal end. Right, right. So the distal end is okay, right? Yes, no dissection yes. and the no. position is good and size is okay, right? Very, yes. very good condition, right? Yes. And uh, there are no incomplete position and also, uh, yeah, expansion should be okay, right? Very good. Ah, you try to make a 3D, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah, this is a fly through image, right? Yes. From, yeah. From yeah. The now the, from the proximal to the, uh, yes, distal, uh, that, uh, the, the left main, yes, stand strut could be seen. And the white color demonstrate a uh, uh, well opposed uh, strut. And here might be the, uh, right, already the LED. And here is an, yes. LCX a bifurcation, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the and the is to the proximal strut. Yeah. And try to rotate. Yes. Here we can identify the uh, the branch, right? CX yes. Branch. Yes. Yes. Very well open, right? Yes. Yes, looks fine. So that's, that's about it, right? Yes, yes. This is in a fly through image. We can identify the two wire there, right? Yes. One wire goes in, now down, right? So already past the, the branch. And uh, yes. Awesome, uh, look, looks very fine. Yes. Yes. So now we'll uh, conclude by taking a final uh, angio view. Okay. Uh, oh. Yeah. Good. Good. Any more comments about the OCP, Dr. Akasaka? Yeah, it it might be okay. Uh, many doctors can understand uh, the fly through image. I hope, right? Yes, yes. And so also, color bar in the mid uh, mid of the uh, longitudinal view, right? Yes. The the center of the longitudinal view is uh, uh, yes, uh, lumen profile. Uh, yes, it's an automatically detected uh, lumen diameter, right? So we went to 4.5 here. I don't, do you think we need to, yeah. Here is, do, a, do, shall, shall we go with a five millimeter? Uh, yes, uh, could you measure the uh, diameter, right? 
Here is uh, yes, uh, the, the distal left main, right? Yes. So there's a bit of mallow position there. Yeah, and red color demonstrate more than 300 micron, right? Yes. Yeah, so I'm not sure who are uh, yeah, operating. Kalayan uh, doing operation, right? No, they Moshe please follow. Okay. Uh, what about the diameter, right? This cell diameter is four point four. four. So four. it's four millimeter. Four millimeter. Uh -huh. So the four point five should be. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Right. So I think we're all right, right? Okay, so we'll take our final angio view. Yeah. Uh, right, okay. That's us. Yeah, it looks fine. Done. Epicranial view on it. Okay, another epicranial. We had a, we did the epicranial with the angio code. So here the dye didn't go that well because the catheter was there. Okay, okay. Yeah, so we, uh, but there's pretty diffuse disease actually. Middle lady is pretty diffusely diseased. Yeah. We won't. Do you want, we can take another picture maybe just with GTN after GTN maybe just with 5 ml let's take a final shot because we didn't use that much dye anyway. So we've used 25 to 30 ml so far which is not that bad. So we'll take our final shot now and that's us done with this case. And then we'll... So this is nitro. Fluoro image with nitro. Now we are taking uh, the dye. So there's some disease in the mid segment, right? But we did not stent that. Our stented pound uh, looks fine. And this mid segment has uh, some disease in it. Now that we've stented the proximal part, this is more obvious. How much dye have been used till now? 40 ml. That's great. That's so that's us done. So we will call it a day. Thank you. Uh, this result is acceptable. Professor Shamsamara, you want to say something? I think. No, no, no. I said that's really fantastic. Doing a left main decay crush with 40 mm dye is absolutely fascinating. Very good. Very well done. Thank you. Thank you. So that's us uh, uh, from here. And now we will listen to Professor Akasaka's brilliant lecture. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, thank you for guiding us with this procedure. Thank you. So. Uh, from the cath lab, our cath lab team will say goodbye. So we have Moshet, we have Dr. Abdul Kayyum, we have Mutasim, we have Sister Lipi, then we have our anesthetist, Dr. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, and uh, we have another technician, so Hamim. So they were outside because it's a COVID era, so not all of us are around. So we were all in the team. So thank you so much for being patient and uh, uh, be spending time with us. Thank you. So, bye from the cat lab. Thank you, madam, for your uh, brilliant work. And, Thank you. Uh, we are <coughs> happy that we have, I am happy that I have become a part of your, um, this program. Thank and you so much. You have shown how a complex case can be done very smoothly and fluently, without any hesitation, without any... Uh, Thank you. It is the teamwork. It is the teamwork and uh, God's yeah, grace. Thank you so God. much. Because you are doing regularly and that is why you, you could do yeah. it smoothly. I like to add yeah. two points for the newer beginners that 
the for re-entry into the left circumflex after first kiss and second kiss, always we should use NEW balloon and it is a must. And another thing for report, the uh, balloon should remain proximal to the carina. For young ones, those who will start, for them, I like to add this to the point. Thank Very you. relevant, your short NC balloon. Thank you so much. So Arsana, goodbye. Yeah. Comment from Arsana, sir. This is a nice word, an excellent word. In a short time, with very little dye, uh, she's very skilled. Thank you very much. We are, we are proud of you. Professor Shafiuddin. Uh, yes, uh, I am also agree with Maksum uh, Luhai. Uh, excellent job, uh, done very nicely and within very short period uh, under guidance of IVAS as well as uh, OCT. Uh, but uh, I have uh, one question to the experts that in many centers, we uh, do not use IVAS or OCT. In those centers, if this type of patients we want to deal with, then with the visual assumptions, whether we can uh, go for this type of uh, DK cross uh, or port, uh, report with visual estimation. Dr. Takasi, can I, do you want, want to answer it? Yeah. Uh, I, oh, today's yes, uh, yeah, participant, I hope uh, that there are lots of yes, uh, younger generation I, I, I've had. But uh, it is very important to have the experience. Uh, today's uh, discussion, all discussion may have uh, lots of uh, experience and you can do uh, the same DK crash without any imaging technique, I hope. And, uh, but uh, uh, for the beginner, it is important to check their uh, result by using imaging, right? And then uh, they can do uh, the, uh, uh, without uh, imaging, I think. Therefore, the initial training uh, should be the very important uh, to do the imaging guide. That Thank is my, my recommendation, yes. Final comment about the case. Oh, that is a beautiful case and uh, well done. So thing is that um, I am a little bit different with the uh, Takasi Akasi regarding the dual the DK crush. I think so if you were to do a crush, we should go for the imaging. If it's provisional, then you can uh, deal with that um, without uh, IVAS or without imaging. But the DK crush or Kulot, then the final outcome is most important. So if the IVAS is not available, or if the OCT is not available, then the complex procedure like this calcified lesion and doing the double strain strategy, it may be, uh, we are doing that in a real life, but what's the recommendation? Definitely in the field of the imaging, it's class 2A recommendation, that's right. If I am not fault, it is class 2A in the setting of the TK crash or cool yes. double strain strategy, that's right. So must, that's indicate that we have to be uh, we should do it, and most of the people in favor. But definitely, uh, what Takasaki said, you can do it if a very experienced person. That's a different issue. But um, think about the patient life. Think about the stenosis, think about the stent thrombosis. Because if the left main disease have any stent thrombosis, or the patient may die, that, that is not a good. So provisional stent, okay, you can do this. But DK crush or color or mini crush, then I think so. And in the calcified lesion like this. So double stain, calcified lesion, because on angiography there is calcium. So we must know what is the calcium is. Dr. So Takasi, Takasi told that if you gain a lot of experience of doing uh, DK crash with imaging in initial position, then you can use your experience later position. When don't you have imaging, you can use your experience to finalize the result. That's what I think Dr. Takasi told us. Yes. Initially, a lot of experience, then you can use your experience without imaging. And Dr. Mahmoud, but, but at yeah. the end of the day, is still the recommendation is coming up. It is class yeah. two A yeah. recommendation. It is best to do with imaging. It's no doubt about it. No doubt about okay. it. Okay, but if the experienced people can do it. Yeah. Okay. Rashid, final comment about the case. Uh, it's a great job uh, done by Professor Fawzi Rasul Malik. Uh, at first, we are uh, the panelists had uh, two thoughts that say it can be decay crash or it can be uh, the provisional stenting. But uh, the operator is decided to do the decay crash, and she proves that uh, it is 
uh, expertise. Uh, that uh, we considered the age of the patient and CKD, but she did it only 40 ml dye, with, and the case done is satisfactory. So, uh, so she's, the decision is quite justified to do the DK brush. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone. So next we have a uh, talk, important talk from Dr. Sakashi Akasaka. He'll be talking about role of imaging in the complex PCI. So if everything is okay, ready, so we can go for the for his talk. Dr. Sakashi. Okay. Yeah, right. Can you? All uh, right. I'm sorry. Right. Can you see the my slide? We can see your slide, yeah. Okay, uh, okay. Thank you very much for the kind invitation. And it is great, my great pleasure and honor to be invited to the uh, NHF cardiac course today. And uh, the today's talk is entitled Role of Imaging in Complex P PCI, Optimizing Outcome of Complex PCI Through Imaging, right? This is my disclosure slide. And uh, this is the data, the named IVAS XPL randomized clinical trial uh, written in, in 2015. They randomized uh, IVAS guided and angio guided. Finally, they followed 700 and 700 as shown in this slide. And they uh, demonstrate that IVAS guided PCR is better than angio guide and uh, uh, I was guy, uh, the, uh, the, the event is significantly lower and within an I was guide, if they compared optimal and suboptimal, optimal result demonstrate is a wonderful result compared with and suboptimal result. So I would like to say, even if you use an imaging, the result is not uh, the, uh, optimal. Uh, the prognosis is not so good. So. It is very important to optimize the stent. This is an another data from China ultimate study. You may know very well. Compared with angio guide, IVAS guide demonstrate a better prognosis as shown in this slide. And also, they compared uh, the optimal group and suboptimal group as shown in this slide. MSA is bigger and the plaque burden is uh, lo uh, smaller and uh, distal edge plaque burden also the, uh, the smaller uh, than uh, the suboptimal result and the, the, the 12 month follow up demonstrate a better outcome in optimal result. Therefore, if you use uh, imaging, uh, op uh, it is very important to obtain the optimal result as I explained. And this is a comparison between OCT guide and angio guide PCI with TS or BMS. This is a single center retrospective analysis, and but they demonstrate the better outcome in case with an OCT guide as shown in this slide. And use of OCT can improve the clinical outcome of the patient undergoing PCI. And this is the registry data from UK the number of IBAS increased very rapidly and number of OCTUs increased gradually. And compared with IBAS, IBAS is much better use in UK. However, the compared with angio guide, IBAS guide demonstrate better outcome. But furthermore, uh, the OCT guide demonstrate much better result. Therefore, based on this data, we can expect uh, the better result by OCT guide. At the moment, there are no data, uh, direct comparison between OCT guide and IVAS guide. And based on this data, ESC guideline demonstrate uh, IVAS or OCT should be considered in selected patients to optimize stent implantation. Also, the similar recommendation for uh, instant early stenosis as shown in the bottom. Therefore, IVAS or OCT at the moment is equally uh, to be recommended to get an optimal result. So there are lots of uh, complex region, diffuse complex region as uh, Professor uh, uh, Malik demonstrated today and bifurcation region, severe calcification and 
and so on. So uh, this is uh, one of the case, uh, LAD CTO. Uh, the, the patient is a little bit different, uh, yes, anatomy. This is a big uh, septal branch and uh, the LED is, uh, looks like act as a, a, a diagonal branch. However, this is an actually LED. And then we open the LED. And then uh, after opening the LED, we did an OCT. You can identify the lots of intimal hyperplasia here. And also there are uh, several dissection because of the, uh, uh, the post ballooning, right? Uh, some fibrous tissue can be identified from the, the distal to the, the proximal. And then uh, we measure the, the distal diameter. The mean diameter uh, is uh, 1.9 and uh, the mean diameter in the proximal site is 2.7. How to decide the stent size, right? There are two methods to identify the stent size. Based on the, uh, the uh, lumen diameter, we can select uh, the quarter size bigger, therefore 2.25, and the proximal should be uh, nearly three. And if we take about the, think about the uh, EEL uh, method, EEL in the distal portion is 2.8, and the quarter size smaller and should be recommended, therefore 2.5. So we think about the proximal site, 2.5 uh, and uh, uh, 48 should be the ideal. And uh, we can uh, dilate in the proximal side using a bigger balloon, higher pressure to optimize. And this is uh, uh, how to uh, decide the stent side and how to optimize. Uh, as I told you, there are two methods, uh, lumen-based approach and EEL approach, right? EEL-based approach. Uh, you can select, uh, 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 depend on your preferable uh, method. And after uh, putting a stent, MSA should be more than 4.5 or uh, compared with the reference area, uh, more than 80%. And the position should be less than 400 micron. It might be okay, it will disappear in one millimeter length. And uh, the distal landing uh, plug burden should be less than 50 and non lipidic pool uh, is, is the best. And the distal edge dissection should be less than 60 degree and flap limited within the intima and the length of flap should be less than two millimeter. If there are a big dissection, you try to put a stent, additional stent in the distal portion. Therefore, if you select a bigger size of stent, you try to put the stent very gently to avoid the distal edge dissection, right? And after uh, recanalization, we tried to put the stent EES at uh, 2.548 millimeter. We tried to adjust uh, the, the proximal site based on the angioco registration and then uh, post dilate in the proximal site. And then this is uh, post uh, stent implantation. Some uh, blood can be identified, but here you can identify the angioco registration white uh, dot moving slowly, right? And here is an, a position indicator. Here is a stent and the longitudinal view. You can identify a red color here in the proximal side. What's happened? Here you can identify huge uh, mal opposition, incomplete opposition. Therefore, uh, we try to measure the stent length, right? And here, the 51 millimeter. What's happened, right? A stent elongation uh, because of the uh, after uh, uh, post dilatation uh, that makes uh, the incomplete position in the proximal site. By angio, we cannot identify this incomplete position, but imaging gives you uh, the, the real condition, right? And then uh, we have to uh, focus on the, uh, under expansion in the distal site because under expansion is the most frequent cause of. Uh, stent thrombosis and restenosis, right? Uh, this is, uh, yes, uh, incomplete opposition portion, right? The three millimeter, uh, yes, elongation makes uh, this incomplete opposition. Here is a, a septal branch, right? And you can identify the incomplete opposition stent strut. And here is a short axis view. Red color demonstrate uh, more than 400 micron incomplete opposition. We have to treat here, but we try to uh, 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 
uh, treat uh, the under uh, expansion in the distal side. And then uh, it is important to move uh, the, the uh, uh, castle from this uh, proximal castle to the, this position because uh, the, the uh, breast cell diameter suddenly change the uh, big uh, branch after big branch. Here uh, is a uh, diagonal branch and the, the other is a uh, big septal branch. Therefore, castle should be here and then we have to measure, uh, uh, check uh, this uh, under expansion in the distal portion. We do not have a big branch in this uh, distal vessel, right? Uh, then, uh, because uh, previously we think about the conventional method, uh, how to measure the under expansion. But if there are uh, no branch, uh, we have to think about uh, the gradual uh, yes, uh, size uh, is much here, right? Proximal should be bigger, right? And gradually, uh, yes, uh, change. And also, if there are a big branch in the right hand side, the, the best cell size suddenly changed, right? As shown in the, uh, the C or B. Therefore, as I told you, we have to uh, move the castle here after big branch, this and this. And then we try to check the under expansion in this portion. And the under expansion is 75%, right? Then uh, we try to do the, the uh, post dilatation. And then we do, did a pot to uh, get a good up position in the proximal site. And proximal site, here is an uh, after pot, you can identify the bigger uh, cell condition, right? And then it's quite easy to select the distal cell. Fortunately, there are uh, no link at this site. Here is a link and here is a link. Then you can easily select the distal cell. And after kissing, uh, this strut attached to the proximal side of the side branch here. So you can confirm the uh, good result as shown in this slide. And then this is a final result, right? Uh, the distal uh, 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 expansion is 83%. Uh, it is more than 80% as I told you. And then proximal side, uh, you can identify the red color. This means uh, uh, just uh, the, uh, uh, the, the side branch, uh, yes, presence of the side branch and the, only the proximal is well attached, right? And this is an angiofinal result, uh, looks good. And so uh, this demonstrates the diffuse region and bifurcation at the, at the same time. Bifurcation region uh, uh, PCI might be a 15 to 20% of all PCI in our daily clinical practice and complex procedure uh, might be required. Today, uh, Professor Malik uh, demonstrated a wonderful technique. And the higher risk for complications such as side branch occlusion, stent thrombosis, listenosis, and so on has been reported more frequently in bifurcation region PCI. This is a simple crossover technique and they, uh, this is a data from Korea. They measure the FFR, uh, the side branch, after a crossover, right? And they demonstrated the low FFR and high FFR more than 0 0.80 and less than 0 0.80. In case with less than 0 0.80, the prognosis is worse uh, as shown in the blue color as shown in this slide. And red color demonstrated high FFR. However, we have to pay attention to the, uh, the after three years, even in case with a good FFR, there are uh, several uh, event that demonstrate uh, the least tenos. Why the least tenos will happen even in the FFR is the better, right? This is uh, some explanation. If you can select the distal cell in the side branch, uh, you after kissing, uh, you can uh, uh, treat uh, the, the carina very well as shown in the left hand side. But if you miss to select the distal cell and proximal cell selection, you have the metal uh, uh, carina here. And in, at the site of the metal carina, the shear stress is very low and this is the cause of the, uh, the uh, thrombus formation and then uh, the long-term uh, follow-up, uh, the thrombus becomes uh, organized and uh, 
uh, me uh, membrane formation and restenosis may be uh, happen, right? And then uh, if there are no gel to uh, strand, we never lost the, the side branch orifice. However, the, even in simple gel strut might be acceptable. However, there are a complex gel strut, uh, the lots of uh, uh, yes, membrane formation and listenos uh, happen in, in uh, the long-term follow-up as shown in this slide. So uh, there are some data showing in the recommendation of the which cell uh, should be selected uh, by OCT, we can clearly identify the, the side branch wire is uh, uh, where, right? So uh, I highly recommend to use an OCT if you try to do the, the bifurcation region treatment. And then as you know very well in bifurcation, there are uh, vessel size mismatch in main vessel at proximal and distal of side branch. And if stent size selected to adjust the proximal reference, stent distal edge dissection and carina shift may happen as shown in the left hand side. And if the stent selected to the other side, distal reference, no edge dissection and no carina shift may happen. However, stent malar position may occur. Therefore, today, a, a Professor uh, Malik uh, demonstrated pot should be performed for avoiding the carina shift and malar position in the proximal site. And after pod, it's quite easy to select the distal cell as I demonstrated today by a 3D OCT reconstruction, right? And uh, if we do the pod with bigger balloons, stent malar position may disappear within left main and it becomes easy to recross the guide wire across to the carina due to the gap of the strut becomes much greater as I already demonstrated. And after KBT, J strut may move to the opposite side of the side branch and optimal result could be expected as shown in this uh, schematic representation. And using OCT, we can identify uh, the strut condition and wire uh, position and also uh, link position very well. So therefore, try to select the distal cell. And if, you, if there are no link at the side branch, and if you succeed to select the distal cell after kissing balloon, the result is ideal as shown in this slide. If there are link, even if you succeed to select the distal cell after kissing balloon, still there are lots of uh, jailed strut on the, the uh, uh, surface of the, the side branch. And also if you select the proximal cell, still there are lots of uh, metal carina here. And this is a worst case in the right upper, right? Uh, if you uh, do the kissing, uh, you uh, dis, uh, uh, make uh, this array of the, uh, the uh, uh, cell uh, condition. And the main branch condition in this condition is uh, makes a, a listenosis at the main branch. This is a worst condition. And we did a, a, yes, a hundred case uh, uh, registration uh, there are uh, uh, 58 link free type and uh, link connecting type 47. Even in case with a link free type, the result is suboptimal, but final result is nearly 50 50. So uh, it is important to uh, select the distal cell. And uh, if there are some, uh, yes, uh, poor condition, you, it might be better to leave it alone, I think. And if in case with suboptimal result, the, the uh, jail strut uh, incidence is significantly higher, and then the numerically instant listenosis is uh, higher than the optimal result, but statistically not significant as I already demonstrated this result uh, before. But uh, uh, because of the, the uh, small number, uh, this is, we cannot demonstrate statistically significant. But they, they, therefore, that we try to increase the number 600 bifurcation, and now nearly half is finished. And uh, as uh, today I explained, right, 3D image is very important. If it is not sure uh, the, the wire is proximal or distal, you try to make a short access view. If the, the wire is uh, here in this uh, condition, uh, wire should be the, the proximal cell. 
and then if the uh, if you try to uh, yes, uh, get the short axis view why I should be here and the, the, uh, the why I should be the distal cell and after kissing balloon in this case the result is ideal right so the OCT gives is a wonderful uh, image uh, for demonstrating uh, the, the wire position and cell position and uh, for the younger generation uh, you should be uh, confident uh, to do the kissing based on this image it is very important to learn what really uh, happened at the side branch and uh, what is uh, KBT and uh, the, uh, your result uh, should be demonstrated clearly, right? And uh, try to move on the, the uh, calcification, right? And this is in a colon cancer, 60 years female, the surgeon uh, referred to our department to do the uh, angiography because of the angina. And uh, here is a uh, severe calcification and any kind of uh, device could not be uh, passed here. Therefore, we did the low tabulator. And then after low tabulator, we did an OCT. Here you can identify the, the, the uh, clearly ablated uh, lumen by low tabulator, but the, the lumen size is not enough. And then we uh, size up the bar and uh, two point after 2.0, uh, the, the, the lumen becomes bigger. And here is uh, no calcium, so uh, we cannot uh, uh, upgrade uh, the bar size more. And this is a colon cancer, uh, uh, colon cancer surgery is planned uh, after uh, intervention. Therefore, we did a uh, drug-coated balloon alone and the patient did a uh, very good condition. And also the after operation, the patient is uh, good and and another case, a stable angina here is an angio. Also, you can identify the, uh, the calcium deposition in uh, this view, right? And then there are uh, several stenos and any kind of device could not be passed. Now, after the tabulator, we can identify the, some aberration here. Then uh, uh, we try to put the uh, stent. In this case, it is important to make a clock here like this. And if the thickness of the calcium is less than 500 micron, you can make a crack. And then after succeed to make a crack, you can put a stand uh, very uh, wonderfully and you can expect a good uh, expansion as shown in this slide. If, uh, if we compare the, the, the uh, calcium crack uh, case and uh, no calcium crack, uh, if you have the, the uh, calcium crack, uh, the stent expansion is good and expansion index is better and the binary distance is uh, less in, in the case with uh, calcium clock as shown in this slide. And uh, the cutoff value of the, uh, making a clock is uh, nearly a 500 micron as shown in this slide. And uh, Dr. Fujino CRF demonstrated the scoring system, minimal calcium angle more than five, uh, uh, 180 and 500 micron thickness and length is more than five. Uh, there are uh, uh, zero to four point. And if the point is four, it might be difficult to make a crack and uh, some uh, uh, ablation should be required to uh, make a uh, modification of the lesion. And now, because if uh, you try to put a stent uh, aggressively, uh, there are some damage of the uh, 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 stent as shown, polymer damage can be expected as shown in this slide. Therefore, it is important to make a crack. And this is an OCT guided uh, approach to the severe calcification. Anyway, if there are uh, uh, difficult, uh, yeah, uh, using a scoring system, if the score is more than 4.0 or uh, three, uh, try to use uh, the, uh, Legion modification using a, a low tabulator or a shock wave. And after uh, confirming the, the calcium fracture, you can put a stent. So it is important to confirm the, the calcium fracture uh, as shown in this slide. Uh, this is a recent data comparison between uh, the angio guide and OCT guide in case with non STEMI. And using OCT demonstrate uh, the final FFR better and percent the diameter stenosis is smaller and uh, the, the MRA is uh, good. 
and but there are no significant difference in the clinical uh, result uh, because of the small number. But based on this result, MLA is good and the area stenosis is smaller in our OCT guide as shown in this slide. And uh, therefore, we are expecting the OCT guide and angio guide, also the OCT guide and uh, uh, IBAS guided PCI comparison. Uh, this is now the pivotal OCT studies ongoing. Illuminum 4 is the biggest uh, study and we finished just a COCOA study. We try to demonstrate the OCT guidance uh, better compared with angio guide, I hope. So uh, this is my summary today uh, for the younger generation. Uh, if you use an OCT, angio core registration may allow us to understand the region and the reference site on angiography and uh, the OCT at the same time. A newly developed expansion indicator provides us the site and degree of under expansion by color coded image. And the position indicator demonstrates the site and degree of incomplete opposition by color coded by image and the 3D image. And 3D reconstruction image it might indicate the strut and link position on the side branch orifice uh, precisely and demonstrate the relation between side branch wire and the stem cell detail. Calcium uh, distribution and thickness can be easily identified and uh, rotational atelectomy may be safely performed by OCT guidance. So thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Professor Akasaka. That was an excellent lecture, most elaborate and informative lecture on role of imaging on PCI. Thank you very much for the lecture. Now I invite the panelists to discuss about the matter. Professor Abdul Rahman. Uh, yes, this is a very elegant lecture, I think so. Now, thank you. And, uh, and thank you, Takasi Akasagi, for joining this webinar. But is there any situation where is the IVAS is superior to, to OCT? Yes, uh, as you know very well, uh, CTO case, I think uh, we uh, Japanese like to use an OCT because anyway, you try to get an OCT image, we need a flow. Therefore, the, the uh, CTO case, uh, IVAS guide is uh, much uh, popular. And also the left main orifice or uh, RCA orifice, uh, IBUS should be better because uh, we need an, a flash by through a catheter uh, if you try to get an OCT image. But recently we tried to use a guide liner, um, a child catheter in the, the left main. At that time we can get an a left main orifice image through a, a guide liner. And so we can yes, uh, try to overcome the uh, disadvantage of OCT now. Yeah. But anyway, uh, generally speaking, uh, IBUS should be better in the, uh, the uh, orifice region and the CTO region, as you know and, very well. And the deeper calcium can be delineated more efficiently than IBUS, than OCT? Uh, yes, but uh, you try to. Uh, change the, the, the size of the uh, image, you can see the, the deeper calcium even in uh, uh, OCT. But if there are a surface lipid, uh, we cannot see a, a, the beneath the, the plaque, uh, right? So it is, the uh, yeah, IBUS should be better, yes. There, there are some advantage and disadvantage you can use. <laughs> yes, yes. yes, yes. And other thing is that in CKD patient, IBUS is better than uh, OCT. Uh, yes, so, yes. Uh, as you know very well, uh, uh, but uh, recently, as uh, Professor Marik said, uh, we can get a uh, clear image by saline infusion uh, in RCA, the perfect image, right? And uh, in LCA, we try to use a contrast uh, in a guiding catheter and then a flash the saline in the LCA, right? So we can get an, uh, 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 we can save a lot of contrast. But uh, uh, in a case with a severe uh, kidney dysfunction, I highly recommend the IBAS, yes. Thank you. Professor Mir Jamaluddin. Any comment about the talk? Unmute, please. Unmute. Professor Mir Jamal, unmute yourself, please. 
Thank you, Professor Akasaka, for your brilliant speech. And we have learned many more from your uh, speech. We have learned about the uh, OCT and practically in all centers, OCT is not available in our country, but um, most of the centers like uh, National Heart Foundation Hospital and Research Institute, they have, but some centers have not, uh, till now not available this uh, OCT. Uh, so, uh, we want to learn it and not, we want to... Means uh, not some center. Many of the center have no. Only limited number of center has for city. I did not want to disclose. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> what is the reality? We have to know him. Yes, because uh, many of the center have an IVAS now. It is initially that's IVAS was not present. Now many of... Now, Bangladesh is moving to imaging actually. We are not... Sarah's, uh, right uh, we are starting imaging. And uh, Takasi and also the uh, Gary Mins has a lot of a contribution for this development, I would say that. Yes, most of the centers of our country practically <clears throat> no city. And uh, we are trying, our, uh, in our institute, National Institute of Cardiovascular Diseases, Professor uh, Abjal Rahman, ex-director, my immediate past director, he has introduced IVAS and FFR. And I am trying to introduce ROTA and uh, OCT, if possible. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Shafiuddin. You want to comment? Thank you very much. Uh, a very nice presentation uh, by Professor Takashi Akasaka. We learned a lot. Actually, just uh, Professor Abdul Rahman mentioned that many of our centers uh, we do not have uh, these imaging facilities, but uh, so far we know most are uh, theoretical. Uh, hopefully, we will acquire this and we learned a lot. And uh, where uh, there is a double st strategy uh, and for uh, proper delineation of the uh, and uh, acquisition or any gap or uh, new carina formation, a uh, lot of things we can do very efficiently by these imaging techniques, uh, but we are, uh, those centers, we are uh, lagging behind. Uh, very nice presentation, so hopefully it will help us a lot, uh, our, our faculty as well as our fellows. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Takashi Akasha, for your nice lecture. As you always demonstrated in several times in our country, and uh, with the comments of Professor Abdul Rahman, that the imaging technique is uh, gradually increasing in our country. And from your lecture, we learn many things. And after and the comments of Professor Mid Jamaluddin, if we get OCT, then we can implement your your lecture properly. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Dr. Ashok, do you want to comment something? You are here, you are sitting here. Not hearing to you. Oh, Maksim Bayar channel, sorry. Maksim sir, what is it? 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 Also, Maksim sir, please, you have to comment about this talk. Thank you, Professor Takashi. It was an excellent lecture. And I thank you very much from all of us for sitting here for such a long time and giving us knowledge, as always you are giving. Thank you again. And in fact, all the Japanese operators, they have taught us IVAS and OCT. I remember in 1910 uh, years back when I went for the training for IVAS in a center, uh, I saw that almost 100% of cases where they did uh, IVAS. Not only one machine, they have both Volcano and this one. They have different types of machine, the same uh, cath lab that was amazing. And uh, just to give you an information that uh, first uh, OCT machine we bought back, I think, about 10 years back. And at that time, the machine was produced by iLab. And then one Mr. Green came and he introduced this. I think it was then before Singapore. But you know what? We did, we could not continue because uh, if you do an OCT once or twice in a month, uh, then you do gradually lose confidence. And number point, two point is because somebody has to pay and, uh, you know, uh, patient uh, were not capable of paying. And by the time we developed a skill, 
the next generation machine came. And then came the next generation. So it is very, very difficult for a country like ours to have imaging very soon. It depends on your resource and economic capability. And hopefully, we'll be able to do in near future. Maybe we could not do it, but our next generation will be able to uh, do it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Takashi. Thank you very much for a wonderful comment. Yes. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Akasaka, for your uh, brilliant lecture. We have learned a lot from you. And you have a great contribution to make the imaging very much popular in our laboratory, in our hospital, and in Bangladesh also. And you are a very popular man in our country. So thank you very much. And at the same time, I thank Fajila ma'am for great uh, master class DK uh, crash uh, technique. It's a, a very big, I have seen several cases of her with uh, kidney disease patient with less than 50 ml of dye. She did the DK crash very passionately. And it is really excellent. And I think for junior and for us, it is a great uh, learning for us. Thank you, both of you. Thank you. Thank you, Master. Uh, Dr. Ashok Dutta, Dr. Officer M.J. Azam, are you there? I'm seeing. Uh, Professor Azam. Okay, I think he's not here. So I request Professor Fazila Sistana Malik uh, to, if he's, she's, Professor Fazila Malik. Fazila Pasa, thank Taufik? Dr. Taufik. I think nobody's there. So I think that they are all too tired after doing the case. So I think we should, uh, if there is no further comment, we can end here. And I request, I uh, thank all the participants and the panelists, and especially Professor Takasi Akasaka, who joined us far away from Japan. And thank you very much. Hope to meet you again and someday again with some more interesting cases. And thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.